morning good morning good morning we are live i'm trusting it now that little red button and we are live but i'm not quite sure how many people we've got on yet so i'm going to natter on for a bit and uh, wait for everybody to sort of join in as and when they can but before <coughs> excuse me before we do that first of all i'm going to uh, say good morning to my spirit guide, Grey Eagle, who, as always, is, of course, standing right by my side here. I'm going to say good morning to our facilitator, Chris. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Good. Hi, Rosemary. Hi, everyone. Christmas is coming. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really excited this year for Christmas, everyone, because, well, I mean... I'm going to get to see my grandson and my daughter. I'm going to be staying with them for a little while. And it's going to be a great Christmas and a great New Year because it's all about being with people that you like, being people with people that you love. But it's I'm very, very, very aware that there are lots and lots of people um, who do not have anyone to spend Christmas with. They're on their own um and um you know it, it's it, it's very often a sad time for people because uh christmas is a time when we when we think about the people that we love and the people that we miss it reminds us of uh, perhaps happier times or younger times you know so many people have traditions and i was talking to my friend the other day we always well, i suppose from my parents from my mother probably every christmas when we were kids we would get a pillowcase and in the pillowcase and it was just a small pillowcase it wasn't like it we didn't have we didn't have queen size and king size pillows in those days we just had regular size pillows regular size pillow cases but those pillowcases were not necessarily full but they had a few things in there and um my mother always used to put the pillowcases at the end of the bed. Well, should I say my mother? Actually, she would put, you know, she would put the pillowcases out, and then Santa, of course, would fill the pillowcases, um, as all good Santas do. We know that Santa brings all these gifts and so on. But as we get older, also, of course, we realise that, um, you know, my when when I you know, talk to my grandson about uh, Christmas and, and, and the elf, he's got, an, he's got, he's got his, named his elf, Alpha Alpha. So <laughs> Alpha's around and uh, as, as all of those little elves do, they, 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 they do, they get up to naughty tricks and they do fun things and um, I think he found I think he found his elf in the fridge the other day with his head inside the bag of chocolate, you know that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, and um, but recent, uh, when he's at school uh, with his friends at school, uh, he has quite a few few friends at his school who uh, some celebrate Hanukkah, some celebrate. There's, a, there's an Indian tradition, and I can't think what they call it now. You can all help me out and let me know, but not everybody celebrates Christmas. And, um, you know, when I was younger and then I got older and realized how, how very small a community in the world uh, Christianity is, I was quite surprised because, first of all, Christianity is a relatively new religion, I hate that word religion, don't you? It means so many th different things to so many different people. But Christianity is a relatively new um, religious belief, uh, the belief in Christ and all of that stuff. Uh, and so the amount of uh, people who celebrate Christmas and the amount of kids my grandson goes to school with uh, who celebrate Christmas, they, they seem to be almost in some ways in the minority. Um, but then other kids, they have their own beliefs and their own traditions and their own uh, celebrations, which I think is a really interesting. I think it's really interesting that we get to learn about other people and other people's faiths and so on. And I would love to hear 
if any of you watching, because uh, I'm all about Christmas because I'm I'm a, a Christian. I believe I think if if being a Christian means believing in Jesus Christ, then I'm it. That's me. I'm I'm in. Um, and uh, those of you who have read the newsletter will know that I have I do have a very special relationship with uh, Christ and have had that very special relationship with Christ since I was probably two or three years old uh, when my mother bundled us off as kids to the local Sunday school. Um, so everybody has their own traditions, everybody has their own foods and everybody has their own belief systems and I think that every one of those belief systems is a great belief system if if it works for you and if it's right for you and it feels right for you um, i think that's fantastic i don't think that there's any one religion that no and i'm using that word religion again i don't think there's any one religion that has it entirely right and i think also there's so much room in this world of ours for those many different beliefs, belief systems, and so on. And I think that getting to know how other people live their lives, getting to know how other people celebrate their lives, to me, it's like getting to know what kinds of different foods there are in the world. So I'd love it if any of you out there would like to say anything about that, or if you, perhaps if you don't celebrate Christmas, you might celebrate Hanukkah, or you might have your own. We, we want to know, we'd love to know from you. So, um, so all right, so today's show is, I don't know what it's going to be about, we're going to just let it flow, we're going to just let it happen, we, would, we don't have a theme for today, um, we just are going to let all of you who are listening set the tone, um, get your questions going, however, when the questions dry up, I'm warning you, when the questions dry up, so do I. So as long as you keep asking me questions and as long as you keep being involved in the process, I shall keep being involved in the process. Um, uh, the minute Chris says to me, I'm so, Rosemary, there are no more questions. Uh, oh, great, because then I can finish because now I have to go this afternoon to deal with this again. Mentioning this again, I just would, like to mention Judith, who apparently has had, I don't know if you've had hand surgery, but I know you've been undergoing different surgeries and different issues for the last two years. And I just wanted to give you a shout out and to, and to say, you know, we're sending you healing and do let us know how you're getting on, my darling, because we really, really want to know. Uh, I shall be going into not quite a year, I think it's nine months or so. And um, and it's still ongoing. And um, probably around February, I'm going to have to have some surgery on my hand. Yippee for me. So it's not going to be easy. I think it's going to be quite tough, actually. But anyway, there it is. We all go through our stuff. Isn't it nice to know that when we're going through our stuff, that we are going through our stuff, not by ourselves, but we're going through our stuff with our friends, even if we are online. We're going through our stuff with the help of our angels, with the help of our loved ones in the spirit world. We are going through our stuff, um, not by ourselves. And um, it's amazing, really, because every time I give someone a consultation, I've had some great consultations this, this week, I don't know if uh, my lovely ladies are on the show today. I hope, um, keeping my fingers crossed, you're thinking about that puppy. Not so much a puppy, but you know what I, you know what I'm talking about. If you're watching, you know what I'm talking about. Because I try to explain to people we're not on our own. That our loved ones see us, they hear us, they they know what's going on with us. Uh, they know all of that stuff, and, 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 um, our angels are with us, so even if we're on our own, and even if those of you are thinking 
or dreading Christmas Day and thinking you're going to be on your own on Christmas Day, this is what I'm going to suggest you do. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to suggest that you get yourself a little treat, something nice to eat that you wouldn't normally have. Um, find there will be some great movies on TV. Uh, find some great movies to watch or good books to read. Um, if you can afford it, get yourself a, I don't know what you might like to drink, a rum and coke was always good. My, my tipple of choice is vodka tonic, uh, although I'm up to trying other things. <laughs> um, and, um, and why not just get yourself a box of chocolates or something delicious that you really love to eat and indulge yourself knowing that your angels are there with you, your family are there with you, and they're loving to see you finding even in the most dire of circumstances, they're loving to see you uh, finding a little joy and a little happiness in your life. So be indulgent. It's difficult. I had this lovely, lovely lady and her mother this week. And um, the one thing that I found and I had to try to explain to them is it's, it's, it's okay to be selfish. It's, it's okay to do things for yourself. It's okay to treat yourself. Um, don't feel guilty. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. If, if we don't value ourselves, if we don't love ourselves, and if we don't feed ourselves a little joy every week, what are we? We have to have joy in our lives. So just mentioning the puppy again, just to say. Um, but we have to have joy in our lives. People are wondering, what am I talking about? So, Chris, I'm going to say, do we have, is there anybody there? <laughs> yes, we have lots of people. Okay. And, and the comments are coming in, so that's great. So let's go then. All right. Well, I'm, I've, uh, interesting as you mentioned, Judith, because uh, Judith wrote, Rosemary, I know I'm still on the healing list. However, I'm still having medical problems, which will require more surgery. Ooh. Do you or Gray Eagle see any improvement? Yes, but slowly. Don't be. Did you hear that? Santa might be coming. Wait a minute. Could it be reindeer bells? Can you on the roof? Can you hear that, everybody? Now, yes. If my grandson were here, he would be absolutely convinced that that uh, that Rudolph's come early. But Gary, oh. First of all, I know that Gary Gary's watching, right? We've got Gary. Yes, he is. And I did read it first. It made, you made me cry, uh, but you brought back all those amazing, amazing, amazing memories that we shared. And I'm going to share with everybody else. You'll nobody will know what this is about except Gary and I. But I'm going to. Ring the bell. Oh, God, that's loud. That bell is loud. Now, some of you watching who have known me for a while and who knew Luella, I'll tell you that this came from Luella's farm. And... If you want to know more about Luella, well, you're going to have to read some of the books or go online or something. I don't know where you're going to find the information, but my books will have the information. Luella was first and foremost a patient of mine, then she became a friend of mine, and uh, and um, uh, she was the most amazing woman. And Gary, just like you, I I loved her too. Uh, and so in the mail. Yesterday came this, oh, come on, there came that bell, which I'm going to take with me to New York. And when Reese is in bed and just putting his head on the pillow, well, I might just ring the bell once or twice. And he might wonder, who's around? Will it be the reindeer? And, uh, of course, I'm going to play it up and say it must be the reindeer. 
because I love Christmas and I love the Christmas traditions and I love the Christmas feelings and the joy and the, the I love all of that probably more than anybody else I know so anyway so Gary thank you bless you I really really appreciate it I'll call you later to talk about it all right so uh, sorry now Judith we are with you yes it it's a painful process that's the problem it's you've got to be so patient with these things but it will slowly get better but it's that have patience and know that we're with you chris all right this is from cheryl can we meet new people on the other side and become friends rather than just rejoining with family oh cheryl i love that question that's such a good question and the answer is absolutely yes first of all a lot of those, those uh, new people will be people that we never met in our family. We, we might have heard about them once or twice, but we've never met them. But absolutely, yes, as we progress and as we learn and we grow, we become involved with many, many different people. Some of them our teachers, some of them like as students. Uh, and uh, yes, we shall, you know, we have the opportunity to, to travel. We have the opportunity to join in uh, with all sorts of uh, activities strange as it might sound i had a uh, a young man uh, on tuesday who told his, and told his uh, his uh, parents uh, that he was uh, he was uh, as he was leaving okay i'm off now i'm going skiing um, and he was describing how he now I've heard uh, one particular person, um, uh, David, years ago once told me. There's a story of David in my in my book, and he and uh, I remember him saying um, that he was going cloud boarding, not snowboarding, but cloud boarding. So I guess maybe maybe the young man I spoke to on Tuesday is going. Maybe he's going into the mountains, and maybe he's going skiing. I'm not sure your full needs skis. There are different ways to travel, you see. But there are lots of things to do. And I don't think he's going to be doing those things on his own. I think he has friends. I love that question, Cheryl. Thank you. Chris. The next one is from Sahil. Thank you. My question is, I live in London, Ontario, and practice Hinduism. Do I have my ancestors' blessings? I want to become a psychologist. Did I make the right decision? Oh, let me see. This is one for Grey Eagle. I can't answer this one. Uh, the answer is yes and yes. Um, so, so there must have been two questions. So uh, do, do you have your family's blessings, those in the spirit world? Absolutely, without a doubt. I'm assuming that you know that you're a healer, but we should never assume um, but you are a healer and you absolutely did uh, choose the right, the, the right, you made the right choice. However, um, because you are such a sensitive person, be very careful not to get too drawn in to the situation because the, the, I would suggest, and, and someone many, many years ago suggested this to me, and it's a hard thing to do, but sometimes you have to learn to say the word no and mean it. So don't forget that part of your work is learning to say no, because otherwise you will wear yourself down, you'll tire yourself down, you'll exhaust yourself. So be a little selfish with you too. Chris. All right, the next one is from Mark. I'm looking forward to Christmas morning. Since September, I started buying little things I liked. And when Amazon arrived, I put the gifts in a large bag. Oh. This week, I'll go in and get this large black bag <laughs> and blindfold myself <laughs> and place all the things I bought in separate bags with tissue. I have no idea what I bought, so I'll be surprised as a child. I've done this since 2020. Oh, gosh. Oh, that is amazing. I love that idea. Good for you. Oh, 
I wish I could be a fly on the wall when you opened all of those things. You're probably looking, thinking, and what? And what possessed me to get this? And oh, look at this. I'm so happy I got this. But don't forget, enjoy yourself, find joy. And this is, I'm going to suggest that people do this because I think it's a fun thing to do. And I think we really do, all of us, you know, this, that we, that we have, very often we have this feeling of guilt if we do something for ourselves, if we do something that is just for us. <coughs> we have feelings of guilt that we're being selfish about this. But as human beings, we do need to be a little selfish, not so much so that we walk all over everybody else or not in, not in, the, the, in the way of being selfish uh, by depriving others, but being selfish with yourself, feeding yourself, and I, I'm going to think about you. I'm going to think about you on Christmas morning. And it's going to make me chuckle because I think it's a fabulous idea. And I'm kicking myself. Why didn't I think about doing that? Anyway, keep going, Chris. Gary's saying, um, how can we hang on to that Christmas magic? It seems to stop after the holidays. Oh, I know. Well, that's because it isn't it. It is sad. It is sad, Gary. I, uh, I get what you're saying because everybody around, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> everyone around the Christmas period, you know, we start to think of the joy and the kids and the, you know, because it's all about the kids and the and angels and uh, we start to think about, you know, God and in my case we start to think about um, it's a birthday celebration, uh, probably the most important birthday celebration aside from my grandson and my daughter that we could possibly celebrate and I like to remember Christ on that day um, and um, so we have a lot of joy and, and, and we have you know there's a lot going on and and everybody decorates and we think of the, light, the lights look pretty and they inspire us to be happy and so on and then and then it's gone and um, are you right and then all of that good cheer all of that good humor seems to dissipate it seems as if we can only you know we gear ourselves up to be happy for this point in time or, or to be or to feel blessed with this point in time and then all of a sudden life takes over and what we think what we have to try to do if we can is to understand that um while life is painful while life can be joyless for many people we we can remedy that by being determined and bringing as best as we can and as much as we can bringing a little joy into our lives uh, when i think about my puppies i mean they brought joy into my life every single day and they still bring joy into my yeah sorry um i've got them gathering around here at the moment <laughs> that's to, awesome to, ha to catch a glimpse of cachorro and nino and and anyway the whole we get a, get a whole bunch so but when you think about it and you think about your animals even if they are gone from you in a physical sense they are still with you and still around you and still looking at you like they adore you as my puppies adore me um and they've obviously come this morning just to say hi to me and as i'm talking about them to remind us to remind me to remind all of you that when you if you can hold on to the past joys the past the things in the past that made you smile the things in the past that made you joyful and then if you can take a walk in the park and you can see the kids and the dogs and the um, and the old lady on a you know on a walking frame who's still got a smile for you there's so many things in our lives that we can that can help us to hold on to the joy and that's what we should do we should remind ourselves every day of what is joyful what i often say to people is this if you have a struggle with this when you go to bed at night, and I'm going to suggest that everybody does this at night, before you go to bed, when you lay your head on the pillow, and you're, you know, you're sort of at that point of about to go to sleep, 
think of 10 things. You should be able to think of 20 or 30 or 40, but let's be reasonable. Uh, think of 10 things. Think of 10 things that you have been blessed with in that day. Um, I had, I was talking to a lady who has multiple sclerosis and she's blind. And um, one of the first things she said to me was, well, I did wake up this morning. I mean, come on. Isn't that amazing that somebody could have that attitude? So one of my blessings uh, that, you know, have has been talking to people, giving people messages from those in the spirit world, bringing children uh, and parents together once again. And uh, so I, I'm very, very blessed. But if you're wondering how to bring the joy back, try looking before you go to bed at night, looking and thinking, what what was there about today that was joyful? And even if you've had a really lousy day, there's if you look hard enough, there's always something joyful that happened in that day. No matter how lousy it is, focus on that one joyful thing or those 10 joyful things in the day that have happened to you. Wait a minute, um, you're breathing. Yeah, that's good. Um, and, um, you know, you can either go the way of, I'm breathing, but the air is really foul and awful. Or you can go the way of, I'm breathing. Great, I'm breathing. You know, um, don't go towards a negative of things. Go towards the positive of things. And that's how we can hopefully uh, keep the joy going and keep uh, all of that wonderful stuff that we see at Christmas, keep all of that going together. Chris. Tara's on from LinkedIn saying, I love Christmas. I'm a converted Catholic. Oh, hi, Tara. <laughs> well, good. Um, you, do you, do you do the, do you do the fishes on Friday night? Uh, I, my lovely neighbors, my, the best best neighbors I've ever had, ever. My lovely neighbors, Janina and Henrik, um, who are not here for Christmas, they're in New Jersey, <laughs> freezing cold and everything. So, um, but they they have a fish for, for Friday night. They don't have any meat, everything is fish. So I love that idea um, because I love fish. I've never done it myself, but uh, anyone who's out there who wants to invite me for a fish dinner, uh, it works for me. Chris. Both Dean and Mary Lou are saying hello and good morning. Good morning, good morning. Deborah, Deborah says, are there any of my loved ones in spirit around me? Our family is going through tough times. Who has been around me? Thank you, Rosemary. Um, who is this again? Deborah. Deborah. Um, of course. Why are you asking me a question you know the answer to? Of course your loved ones are around you. I'm sorry to hear that you've been going through tough times. You know, it's really, it's hard, isn't it? Sometimes it's so hard for us to, because sometimes it's, you know, life is so tough and it's such a struggle that we really, really do struggle to, to remember how well loved we are and how very, very blessed we are. Um, and so the answer is, yes, you do have your loved ones around you and they are always around you, particularly in the tough times. I'm going to tell a story. I told this story the other day. I'm glad Gary's on because it's his story. I'm going to tell a story and I'm probably going to get it wrong. So. Gary, correct me if I get it wrong, um, that uh, my friend Gary told me years ago. And um, I was sitting with uh, Mary Lou's grandson and his friend. And um, his friend wanted to know, he said, my mum says you talk to dead people. <coughs> Is that right? And then we got into this conversation. Now, these kids are eight years old, right? But they're fascinated, wanted to know more and so on. And this uh, kid, Gavin's friend, um, said to me, you know, he was telling me about how sometimes at night time he, he, he uh, might hear somebody uh, whisper in his ear. And I, so I told him 
the story of Gary. So years and years ago, when Gary was a boy, and I don't remember, Gary, how old you were, but were you, were you eight or ten or what were you? Let me know because I can't remember that. I can't remember that bit. But anyway, here is Gary, my good friend Gary. I didn't know him at the time. This is years and years before I knew him. And he was lying in bed. He was asleep in bed. And um, he woke up to somebody, I think, feeling somebody shaking, either shaking the bed or shaking his feet. I'm probably making a hash of this story, Gary, but basically, you know. So he felt and he opened his eyes and standing at the foot of his bed was his grandmother who had died shortly before this all happened. And uh, he could see her quite clearly and he knew exactly who she was. And she was shaking him and she was... She, she said to him, get out. And uh, he was so half asleep and he sort of, you know, rubbing his eyes and opening his eyes and he could see him more clearly. And then he heard her say to him again, louder the next time, get out. And, uh, and he sort of woke up more. He was sort of, you know, more aware and then he said he felt her as if she loomed over the bed over him and yelled at him get out and he was so scared that he leapt out of bed and ran into his mother's room at which point they heard this enormous crash and the entire ceiling in gary's bedroom had fallen down and landed on the bed where no doubt if Gary had still been there he would have been seriously injured if not dead from that moment on and for all of his life he knew that his grandmother was with him um, the fact she had to scare him in order to get him to move thank goodness she did but it was literally seconds after he got into his mother's bedroom. He ran, so terrified, ran into his mother's room because his grandmother had scared him half to death and then crashed and the ceiling came down. And I think that we all have stories, not maybe not quite as dramatic as that, but we all have stories about our loved ones in the spirit world or about experiences that we've had that some might say are unexplainable, but we know that they are perfectly explainable. But we all, all of us have these experiences where um, we, you know, we have, we have those connections with the spirit world and we have those connections where they leave us in absolutely no doubt whatsoever that really did happen and it was not my imagination. And I think that story uh, it reminds me when, you know, when people say to me, do I have my loved ones around me? Yes, of course you do. Are my angels around you? You betcha. Does Gary have his grandmother around him? Well, I don't even have to answer that one, do I, Gary? See, you send me a bell and now I'm telling you a story. So I feel as if you've taken over the show somewhat this morning, which is fine by me because I love that story. But can you imagine, Gary, after all these years of you telling me that story, however, what, 20, 30 years ago or something, uh, here I am sitting in my living room telling this same story. Uh, actually, no, it wasn't my living room. It was Mary Lou's living room. Telling that same story to these kids, eight-year-old kids who were fascinated and interested. And did I really talk to dead people? And do they are they really alive? And can they really talk to us? And I told them that story to illustrate just how closely they are with us. Isn't it strange how those stories keep coming around and around and around? Right, Chris. So now I'm at the part of the chat room where people were listing their indulgences that they might have Ooh, for Christmas. Great, go. I might so deep. <laughs> Dean says his indulgence is eating a whole can of sardines. Oh, I love sardines. I love sardines in tomato sauce. When I was, years ago, when I was in Spain, I, I went on a holiday to Spain and stayed in this hotel. And in Spain, I would say this, that Spain is the country of sardines. Probably lots of other things as well. But 
they had this hotel would have a buffet lunch every single day and every single day there was this huge dish of sardines in tomato sauce and they were like sardines you wouldn't get them in a can because they wouldn't fit in the can because they were so big and fat and luscious and delicious and every every single lunchtime i would have sardines and i went home with i went went home weighing a lot more a lot heavier than i did when i got there <laughs> i love sardines they're one of my favorites good for you keep going judith says i enjoy my wine i'll sip my wine and share a toast with all oh good i like that idea as well i would forego the wine and I have been known, I don't drink a lot uh, at all these days and hardly ever have a drink at all, actually. But when I do, um, and it, it's, it's either vodka or maybe just a brandy or just brand, a nice good cognac on its own and, uh, and with some Stilton cheese or some Roquefort cheese or something like that. See, now you're learning my indulgences. Um, I would always forego the wine in preference to a good cognac, absolutely, or an Armagnac, or a, let me see, or I get the point here, get the picture. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, good for you. I like that, Judith. And don't forget to say cheers to me, please. All right, the next is from Yolanda. That's exactly what I will be doing on Christmas Eve, making myself a scrumptious lobster dinner, watch Hallmark movies with my favorite dog, and going to Christmas Eve mass. Oh, I love that idea. I absolutely love that idea. Um, we always had Christmas mass at my church. We'd have candles. Everybody would uh, hold a, a, a small candle and uh, uh, we sang Christmas carols and we may even do that this year if I can persuade my daughter uh, definitely can persuade my grandson and we'll find a church and perhaps do that same thing. It's, it's a wonderful thing to do. Wonderful thing to do. Chris. Rhonda says, I love, love decorating for Christmas. <laughs> also, I miss my dad's physical presence on Christmas day, even though I know he's with us. Even though I miss him, I managed to really enjoy Christmas time. I think that's great. And, and, you, and you know that he's there with you and you know that he's enjoying. And I'm glad that you find joy in the day. That's fantastic. Lisa says, hi there, Rosemary. I stay joyful with self-indulging long Epsom salt baths, various flavorful fudge samples, <laughs> and a Dr. Pepper. Glad I have Thursday off to see you live again. Oh, Sad, <laughs> my lady I care for went into a nursing home to regain some strength in her legs. Oh, that's sad. But hopefully she'll be getting Epsom. I believe in Epsom salts. I've been using them on my hand. I got a big giant bag of Epsom salts and they're, they're great for so many things and they're great for aches and pains. And if you've got arthritic joints or just tired limbs or what have you just put a whole good dose of epsom salts in the bath and sink in there and just l let let that stuff sort of just sink into your flesh into your body and rejuvenate you it's a fabulous thing to do my mother used to make us drink epsom salts don't do that don't do that no need to do that she put them in a bit of water and make us drink them and then i would immediately throw up but she'd still make me drink them anyway um chris tracy says uh she and her dad have a bell story and she would appreciate your opinion on her singing gift please go ahead <laughs> that's all she wrote i don't think that's we can it? hear her what yeah. <laughs> what i have a bell story and she doesn't give it to us What's going on? And she wants me to give an opinion on her singing. I can give an opinion on the singing because Gregor tells me it's lovely. Um, the bell story, you got, if, you, if you can't just say I've got a bell story and then not tell us about it. But we do appreciate what you did write to us. And keep singing is my, I, I mean, I love to sing. 
I, I'll sing anywhere and everywhere. I have to stop myself uh, sometimes from just breaking out into song if I'm in a store, in a grocery store or something, and, and I just, just maybe I hear, hear you know, something over the, you know, how they play music, and I just want to just, but I have a very strong voice. Um, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure it would be appreciated always. Just keep singing. Chris. Caroline says, my dog Elton, a German shepherd, was a guard dog given to my ex-husband when we married many years ago. When my husband left me, he was still kept outside, then given away. I feel terrible and I love him. I used to have two Alsatians and when my husband decided to move us to London without even asking me, we did get divorced eventually. You're not surprised, are you, by this story? One minute I had my beautiful Atlas and Minta with me and I'd had them for years and they adored me and I adored them and the next thing I know they're gone. And he told me that he took them to a farm. I have no idea why or where, but he didn't want to take them with us to London. And so he just, uh, and I divorced him. You can see why, right? You can see, how, can you believe that somebody would do that? One minute the dogs are there and then the next minute, you know, and they were fabulous, 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 fabulous dogs. I love them to pieces. Chris. This is from Violet. Hello, Rosemary. It's great to see your hand is on the mend, albeit slowly. It's half the size it was in the summer. Sending love and Christmas cheer, and we must catch up very soon. Yes, where are you? Where have you been? What's going on? I want to know everything at all, everything about you. Unfortunately, in February, it's going to be not like this at all, because they have to do three surgeries they're going to do them all in one isn't that wonderful for me um so maybe you'll have to come again and take care of me violet <laughs> okay chris Kay saying halanika is saying what a lovely idea to make yourself a bag of surprises isn't that the best i like that i really i really like that idea in fact, I might adopt that idea, but you see, I'm already thinking we could do it. If I started in January and just got some stuff, you know, stood it slowly, I could make a, a bag for Reese, a bag for Samantha and a bag for me. And, and then I could surprise us all by, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, well, anyway, maybe I could, yeah, maybe, you know what, maybe I will just do it for me. Why don't I just do it for me? Yes, I think. You know, I think what I'm going to do this year, maybe in the new year, maybe maybe New Year's Day or something, I think I'm going to to do something really good for me. I'm trying to think what it might be. I could make a tiramisu. That would be good. I'm trying to think. I can't make things that's going to make me fatter because I'm already too fat. I mean, I've got to find ways of losing weight. Uh, but the idea of spoiling yourself, isn't it fun? Isn't it great? Maybe I'll buy a nice bar of soap that I can indulge myself with. I'll think about it. I'll let you know. Chris. So he'll responded after you gave a message. I could always see spirits as a kid, but I still have high intuition. Well, you have sensitivity is what you have and that intuition as you call it is that those times when you uh, automatically raise your level of consciousness we don't often don't even know that we're doing it but keep doing it uh and keep you know but remember what i said that little word no is very it's going to be very very important to you in the future chris VM says, hello, a year and a half ago, our daughter passed away. We are 70 and all alone. Is anyone <coughs> with her? You. Um, okay. I wish I knew your name. I hate to say VM, but anyway, however, 
whatever. I'm listening to Gregel as I'm talking to you. And I think you're going to find that your daughter is going to be spending Christmas Day with you guys. Uh, so she's not on her own by any means. Um, but neither are you. I know you must feel alone. You must feel devastated. But please try and understand that she is there. She's with you very much so. And that she is very present in your lives, watching you and watching over you. And when it's your turn, which will be a little while yet, but when it's your turn, she'll be there to meet you and to help you to, I think she might drag you over. I think she'll be so pleased to see you. So please, please don't try not to be too despondent. It's the worst thing, the worst thing that can happen to any of us is to lose a child. But she is there with you. That, that I can promise you. Chris. Lonica, L-O-N-N-E-K-E, -E, um, was answering the question posed earlier about what can we do to keep the Christmas spirit alive? And they wrote, keep that feeling through the whole year and put your ego a little bit more aside. <laughs> I like it. I love it. But here's the thing. You say keep that spirit alive but it's like saying to someone, and I, tr I try to say this to my students, I try to instill this into people. Um, you know, it's like me saying, okay, make a cake. Well, what kind of cake? I don't know, make a chocolate cake. But you need the ingredients and you need the recipe. It's not enough to say, keep that, because we need to know how we can keep that joyful spirit. So if you have an ingredient or two, um, any of you who are, who are listening, uh, what is what are the things that you do? We need the ingredients because some people, it's okay saying, well, you know, just keep it alive. Well, how? how? Make a cake. Well, how? I can show you how to make a cake and I can give you ideas of how to the ingredients that you need to, to keep the joy going and to keep keep moving on with things. And, and one of those important ingredients is to uh, always take a look at what other people are doing. Um, try if you can. The world is so miserably uh, negative at the moment and I, ref I absolutely refuse to go there. Life has always been miserable if you've looked for it. Nothing has changed. The, the things that we're miserable about change, but nothing has changed. Uh, there are, the, the world has always had its traumas and its difficulties, its wars, its diseases, and all of that from time began. And we can immerse ourselves in the negativity if we want to. But I would much rather through all of that negativity, and I'm fully aware it's there. I'm not dismissing it. I'm not saying it isn't happening, but what I'm saying is, okay, but I need to focus on the good stuff. So I'll send healing prayers. I'll send out my energy. I'll, if I, you know, hear of a plague or a, a the, you know, a, a a war or whatever it is, I'm going to send out my healing energy. But what's the point in sending it? It's going to be negative. It's got to be positive. So here are a few of the ingredients that I'm giving you in order to make this cake, which is this, let's, you know, refer to the, the cake as this joy that we need to keep going with ourselves and the, and the, and the positivity that we need. We need to make this cake as rich and as beautiful as possible. And so... Give me some ingredients. What are the things that you do that, you know, don't don't tell me and don't tell anybody else that's what you, you know, keep it up, keep going, you know, just don't say that. Tell us how. Give us some ingredients. And that's, I'm saying that to all of you. What are the ingredients that you can think of that can make this cake, which is your life, which is the joy in your life, which is the positivity in your life what are the ingredients that we need to put in there to help us to help us to keep going and to, and to keep reminding ourselves to be positive My, one of the things that i like to say to people is you know you, you think your life is miserable 
take a visit to the nearest children's hospital. Go to the burns unit, why don't you? Take a look at the suffering that's there and thank God that it isn't you. And thank God that you can go in there and that you can sit down and maybe read a story to someone, read, you know, talk, talk to these kids, read them a story, be there for them, volunteer. Uh, in a, in a, if, you, if you're into animals, volunteer in a, to kennels. Uh, volunteer to, there, there are places where uh, people place pets that are sick and need to be taken care of. If you're into that, do that. There are so many, many, many ingredients to make this cake the best we can make it, the cake being our lives. Uh, I like to think that my, my cake, me as a cake, I like to think I'm, well, I like to think I'm a fruit cake, actually, yes. Well, in England, if you're a fruit cake, it means you're nuts. It means you're a little crazy. So I'm a fruit cake, definitely, because I'm a little crazy. But I'm also so rich with good stuff and so filled with brandy. <laughs> Not that I've just told you I don't drink, but you know what I'm saying. I I want to fit. I want to be. If I'm going to be a fruit cake, it's going to be the richest, the most moist, the most delicious. You're going to want to come back for more. You're going to want to take a slice of me. And I'm happy to give you as many slices because my cake is a cake that can, ne is never ending. It's like a magic cake, keeps going and going and going. What kind of cake do you all want to be? How about that? Don't be, a, you know, if you want to be a lemon cake, I was going to say don't be a lemon cake, but if you, I make the best lemon cake ever, but it's moist and sharp and delicious and yummy. So what kind of cake do you want to be? And then work at it. Chris. Flory says, Rosemary, my 17-year-old grandson has only one kidney. He seldom drinks water and eats very little. His dream is to become a surgeon. I feel anxious about his health. Do you have any insight in this situation? Thank you. I have so much insight into this situation. For those of you who don't know, and I don't know, what's the name of this person, Chris? Flory. Flory. Flory, I don't know if you know this about me. Maybe you do, and maybe that's why you're asking me. Because I am the queen of this subject, if you like. It's because when I was... Uh, 20 years old, uh, I, I was very sick and um, uh, I went into hospital and the surgeon, I had a fantastic surgeon, his name is Mr. Smith and um, uh, he was amazing and he decided that I was far too young to lose a kidney so he decided that he was going to try and reconstruct it all. Uh, which took hours of surgery, and um, I was uh, afterwards. Uh, I was in a coma for um, over a week, and um, anyway, the upshot of it because because the surgery was took so long, I ended up with a kidney infection, which took so long, and then they couldn't figure out what the infection was, and they couldn't figure out how to treat it. So I had to go back in, now I'm 21 years old, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to the hospital. Now I'm 21 years old and uh, and they have to take it out. They have to remove a rib. I think they removed the rib the first time to try and get up and into it and so on. So they sawed off a rib. See, you didn't know this about me, did you? Did, or maybe you did, but anyway. And you know, the weird thing about it is that, you know, when you've sort of, you've lost, you know, you, you, you're missing a part, you're missing a bit, missing an organ, because they ended up obviously having to take it out. Um, then, you know, your intestines, these, we have, the intestines are huge. And we know, we've seen pictures of intestines and they're like big, long, wormy things. And, and what happens is uh, your intestines start to spread a little bit and move a little bit. And sometimes when my tummy rumbles, if I'm hungry, my tummy rum rumbles, my tummy rumbles in the back, not in the front. So anyway, I have lived this life 
uh, for blah, 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 years, lots of years. I was 21 when they finally took out the kidney. And um, then I was told I would never have children uh, because my uterus was back to front and I kept having miscarriages. You name it. it anyway, and, and so I look at my daughter, who's my miracle, look at my grandson, who is also my miracle. Uh, and here I am all these many, many years later. Now, um, I do understand that you worry about him, but it is, there are so many people who relate to my story because you would be amazed how many people are walking out, around with one kidney or one lung or, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the other stuff, but anyway, and, um, I can I can understand why you worry that he you know doesn't drink water, but as long as he's drinking, if he's drinking something you know um, other than uh, I don't know not so not such good stuff, uh, but um, I promise you he's going to be fine. I am the living proof that lots of years after many many. If your grandson lives to my age, he's, you know, great. And there's no reason why he shouldn't. Um, I do understand why you worry about him. It's a big thing to have your kidney removed. It's a huge thing. And people deal with these things differently. There's a lot, a lot of pain involved. And, of course, then there's the worry that you've only got now one kidney. And I've had, uh, from time to time, lots of worries, lots of concerns I had a tumor on the kidney that's remained and all sorts of things go on, but we will not die. We cannot die until it is our time. He'll be, this boy will be as healthy as he wants to be. I get that you're worrying, but take a look at me. So you have an example here. Um, if, he, if he had two kidneys, he was, if he was perfectly healthy, um, you know, you're still going to worry about your kids, aren't you? You're still going to worry very much about them. So, you know, uh, I mean, my daughter had um, an ovary that was born, damaged. We're a very weird family. My daughter had her ov one ovary was not working. It was completely blocked. So they said that, you know, she'd have a, a tough time having uh, babies normally. Here I have my grandson, Reese, who is amazing. He's a fantastic piano player, 10 years old. And, uh, and um, he's, he, he said to me the other day, Mosey, do you think I would be being greedy if I asked Santa for, I can't remember what it was, it was a Lego set or something. I mean, he's such a darling boy. Here's what you have to do. You have to look at this grandson of yours, who I know you love very much. Look at all the positives. Stop nagging him that he needs to drink more. Stop nagging him that he's not eating enough. You know, just let him be, love him, nurture him, care for him, and look at all the good things there are about him because there are many, many things about him that are wonderful. And just remember, you know, no matter what, we can actually not only live, but have a great time and, and have a wonderful life. Whether we've got one kidney, one ovary, one lung, whatever it is, we can manage. It's, you know, we, and not only manage, we can have a really, really amazing, amazing life. So they have bared my soul to you all. Now you all know that uh, you, you've, you've, heard the, you've heard the nursery rhyme. There was a crooked man who had a, a uh, crooked wife. They, he had a crooked six, sixpence and something, um, and they lived in a crooked house. Well, I guess I am the crooked, uh, if you like, the crooked woman, but I'm living my life to the full. And this is why I say to people, find the ingredients that you need to make yourself the best cake you can possibly be. <coughs> That's all you can do. And then share it. Chris. Well, you're right at noon, Rosemary. You do have more questions. What would you uh, like? Um, yeah, I do have to 
be off fairly shortly with this. But anyway, um, uh, let's just do just a, a few more. All right. This is from Lee. First time posting. Oh, hi. I am on a journey of enlightenment. I am struggling with meditation. I feel that there is something in my heart space holding me back. I seem <laughs> stuck. Can you help? Oh, gosh, yes. I struggle with meditation. So many people who claim to meditate, really what they're doing is they're contemplating rather than meditating. Meditation is a hard thing to do. There are different ways that you can achieve this state, but don't give yourself a hard time because giving yourself a hard time is what is stopping you from doing the one thing that you're trying so hard to do. Give yourself a break. Time yourself 10 minutes. That's it. Don't do it for until, until you get into it. And don't worry that you can't do it because most people can't do it. It takes a long while. It takes a long while to practice. It takes a, while, a long while for you to get into that. So I'm glad you're on this path. And I love the fact that you're on this path. But stop giving yourself such a hard time and allow things to flow. You could go on my website and go to the healing part of it. And um, I'm sure there'll be something uh, on there that will help you and guide you towards uh you know, uh, achieving um, a, 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 a kind of meditation. There are many different ways to meditate. There are many different kinds of meditation. Don't be hard on yourself. If you were my student, that's what I would be saying to you. Stop worrying. I personally, I'm going to admit to you, find it almost impossible to meditate because as soon as I raise my level of consciousness, I'm busy seeing and talking to and getting stuff, other stuff. Chris. This is from Carol. Why would a past loved one never contact us? My father has been gone a long time now, but I never quote hear anything from him. I'm sure he's quite fine, but has he forgotten me? Is this normal? Um, I think it's more about why aren't you listening properly? Why aren't you paying more attention? Why aren't you putting aside that 10 minutes and being consistent in the way that you are listening there are certain ways to listen it isn't that our loved ones aren't there for us it is that we don't know how to listen we don't know how to connect with them we don't know how to see them and again i'm going to refer you to our to my uh, website um to the youtube channel where you'll see there's so many different things that you can look for and i explain to you how you can raise your level of consciousness and you can pay attention but you have to be consistent carol and if you're not consistent it's not going to happen chris this is from gina my daughter died in a bad house fire saving her 10 month old son um, that's all she wrote okay uh gina wow um this is a, a this is an extremely sad story but it's an also wonderful oh rosemary story. she wrote one other thing was she in pain before she left okay um so um it's too late to tell this story now um uh, i wish we'd had this uh, question sooner but we have to take people we have to take you in line um so I'm asking Bray Eagle, what a wonderfully brave uh, daughter you have. What an amazing, amazing girl. There is a story I tell in one of my books, and I don't remember, unfortunately, which one it is, but it's about this, a similar thing that happened. And I was actually a, let's say, a visitor. I was able to watch as this man ran through the house uh, trying to save his children. And as I was standing there and I was watching, um, I saw an angel. And in the angel's arms were two children and two young children. And as I looked at her, she said to me, the angel said to me, um, two will be saved and two will come with me. 
I want you to think about that because I'm pretty certain and I'm listening to Gregor as I'm telling you this story. Um, I believe there was an angel uh, helping your daughter watching and waiting. I believe that it was her time to go. And I believe that if that angel were to speak to me today, she would say, um, one will come with me and one will stay behind. I do not believe that your daughter was in pain. I think that she was beyond feeling pain. I think she was focused on her child. What a wonderfully brave, brave and blessed daughter you have. And you should be so, uh, so, so proud of her. And um, how amazing, what an amazing story. I know how sad you must be, but boy, what a gift uh, that child was to you because she gave you the gift of her grandchild. And no mother could give a gift greater than to give the gift of her child to those she loves. And obviously she loves you and you love that grandchild of yours. And I know that you work to do the best that you can do to keep that child safe as you know your daughter wants you to. I'm sure she visits you often. I'm sure she comes many times, probably many times in a day to check on you, to check on the family. And I'm sure that she is safe that she is well, Gregor has put his hand on my shoulder to say that I'm, it's not that I am sure, I am positive that she is safe and well and watching over you all and is this child's angel. How nice, what a gift. Um, one will come with us and one will stay behind. So I think your daughter had her angels with her helping her through this ordeal. Okay, Chris, I think we're going to end there. Uh, we shall be back next Thursday. Uh, please, it'll be Thursday, the Thursday before Christmas. I'll be, I shall be in New York, if anybody is interested in that little tidbit. Gary, uh, we want you to come. Samantha said to me, well, Gary, come and visit. We want you to come visit. So, um, until I see you all again, um, I, I would like to thank you all for, you're so supportive of me and I so appreciate it. I wish we had time for more questions. So I'd like to, first of all, of course, say thank you to Grady, as always, for being here with us today. I would like to say thank you to Chris, our lovely facilitator. Again, I'd like to say thank you to all of you. Please, everyone. Hope to see you next Thursday, same time, same place, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, spread the word, because we love to have new people. We love to reach, us. I mean, we reach so many different countries. It's amazing to me. So please, until I see you again, please, everyone, have a very, very blessed rest of the day. Have a very blessed uh, rest of the weekend, everybody. And uh, God willing, I will see you all next Thursday. Bye-bye, everybody.